In Episode 8 of House of the Dragon, we saw the Greens increase their power at King's Landing by deciding to renovate the Red Keep, and the changes they've made may be better able to explain why the Iron Throne looked so different in Game of Thrones. In today's video, we'll try to explain Game of Thrones' Iron Throne difference and also break down Viserys' epic throne room entrance. So let's dive right in. First off, here's all the changes made to the Red Keep in Episode 8. When House of the Dragon first premiered, people noticed certain key differences between it and its predecessor, Game of Thrones. Among the biggest was the look of the iconic Iron Throne. Many believed that it didn't look quite like how they'd seen it in HBO's long-running fantasy series. That's understandable, of course, since we're seeing a 200-year-old version of it. But now it seems that there may be another reason behind why the Iron Throne looked the way it did in House of the Dragon, and it's linked to Queen Alicent and her father, Sir Otto Hightower. We saw in Episode 8 that with Viserys' health declining, the Hightower have assumed control over King's Landing in place of the King. Because of this, they've changed the Red Keep, and this includes removing Targaryen heraldry as pointed out by Prince Daemon. In place of the iconic references to Targaryen conquests, there are now seven pointed stars and statues. These are from the Faith of the Seven, which many in Westeros, including the Hightower, follow. These religious statues were seen added to many places in the Red Keep, including the Iron Throne Room. It goes to show that anyone that's in charge of the seat of power in King's Landing has the power to make certain adjustments to the Red Keep and the Iron Throne along with it. Next, this unique detail finally explained why Game of Thrones has such a vastly different Iron Throne. With how memorable the Iron Throne is, fans were somewhat upset to see it looked changed in the prequel. But with the interesting tidbit we'd learned from Episode 8 of House of the Dragon, it's now fair to say that the different look of the Iron Throne in Game of Thrones was always planned. With Alicent setting the precedent in the Red Keep that anyone ruling is able to shift and alter the look of the castle, it's clear that other notable kings that ruled had it changed over time. Among them is likely King Robert Baratheon, who took over the reins from the Targaryen family and wiped out most of it. It's quite possible that when he took over, he got rid of all Targaryen iconography from the Red Keep. The Iron Throne itself is a testament to the battles that the House of the Dragon has won against its enemies, and King Robert might have reduced its size to make it seem less threatening or to reduce the accomplishments of the once mighty Targaryens. It's amazing to think how a small detail from a decade ago has finally been given this much context. Fans have always perceived it as a strange design choice to reduce the size of the Iron Throne in Game of Thrones, but it makes so much more sense that King Robert waged a war against against the Targaryens would have wanted to limit the grandeur of the family after he took over the Red Keep. Plus, here's why these changes are so important for Game of Thrones. Changing the Red Keep and the Iron Throne doesn't just have to do with branding the castle in a new look. Instead, it's a statement about usurping power and establishing control. As we saw in House of the Dragon, House Hightower was ruling in King Viserys' name, and this is the first time another grand house is taking control away from the Targaryens in King's Landing. This is a theme that continues even 200 years later in Game of Thrones. After the death of King Robert, he was succeeded by King Joffrey Baratheon. After his death, he was succeeded by his brother, King Tommen. And after his death, his mom, Cersei Lannister, took over. All of Cersei's children have the name Baratheon, but they're actually secretly the children of Cersei and her brother, Jaime, making them full-blooded Lannisters. During this time, their father, Tywin Lannister, was the Hand of the King and was the actual source of the Lannisters' power. Despite being in a monarchy that supposedly belonged to the Baratheon family, the Lannisters assumed full control of King's Landing, and because of this, they used their own lion symbol to embolden their rule over the Red Keep, instead of the Baratheon stag. We should also mention what Alicent's Red Keep changes mean for House of the Dragon. The team behind House of the Dragon explained that the Queen heavily invested time in her faith between Episode 7 and Episode 8 of the Game of Thrones prequel. Ever since she attacked Rhaenyra and tried to kill her, it seems she's been using religion as a way to keep her temper tantrums under
under control. This is likely why there were so many religious symbols found in the Red Keep when Daemon and Rhaenyra returned. As with all things in A Song of Ice and Fire, these changes might seem small, but they hint towards a major shift in the characters. By mounting symbols such as the seven-pointed star in the Red Keep, and even in the throne room, the High Tower were subtly extending their control over the throne. They were showcasing their much grander intentions to assume control of not just King's Landing, but the entire Seven Kingdoms. Otto Hightower knew the king wasn't going to stick around for too long, and they'd even been numbing his mind by giving him milk of the poppy, so it seems like they were already making preparations for their takeover, and were just waiting for Viserys to pass away. Rhaenyra could notice these changes, and understood Hightower's plans immediately. It's interesting to note all the small things that eventually led to the upcoming conflict between these two houses. Moving on, let's explain Viserys' epic entrance in Episode 8. Easily the most amazing scene in House of the Dragon so far was when King Viserys walked into his throne room in Episode 8. It was clear that the Valerions and Hightowers were ganging up on Rhaenyra and trying to corner her and her family. And just when it looked like all hope was lost, Rhaenyra's dear old dad came walking in to help her out. The director behind the episode, Gita Patel, recently spoke with E.W. and broke down Viserys' grand entrance. When discussing the behind-the-scenes process, she explained all the many difficulties and nuances involved in shooting the powerful moment. Patel went into quite a lot of detail about the entire sequence. The director added that it's easily the biggest sequence they've done with Paddy Considine. He had a bunch of cosmetics on him as he made his way into the throne room. Plus, Paddy's amazing acting just sold the fact that Viserys was in an immense amount of pain at that moment. That's likely because he was definitely in some real pain. Gita mentioned how it starts to hurt your back to do a walk like that more than once, but Paddy was dedicated to repeating it until they got it perfect. The director really wanted to highlight just how tough it was for the king to walk that much, and so the scene is quite lengthy and shows all his struggles as he made his way to help his daughter out. Next up, here's what made Patel cry while shooting the scene. The director mentioned how one element from the sequence was so moving that it had her in tears. Patel was crying after she realized Viserys wasn't walking to his throne, but to his daughter standing in his path as he took his last breaths to keep his family and the realm intact. When they first shot the scene, the showrunners and Gita discussed how it would be shot. They always knew that Viserys would look straight at the throne, but in one of the shots, we saw Rhaenyra standing right in the middle of his way, and in that moment, it just clicked with Patel that it wasn't the throne he was struggling to get, but his daughter. The director mentioned how she's the daughter of a father who loves her very much, and would definitely be willing to walk on fire to reach her. And so, despite their lack of time, they tried to make this as much of a Rhaenyra and Viserys moment as they could. It goes to show how you can sometimes discover scenes during production and add a new meaning to them at the last minute. Gita mentioned she wishes she'd made the discovery even just a day before, because then she may have been able to add a few additional scenes to really make it feel like a powerful moment between the father and daughter. Still, we think the scene ended up being one of the most beautiful and touching ones so far. That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on all the changes that have been made to the Red Keep and the director's insight on Viserys' grand entrance? Comment below, give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.